Don't. Don't. I said no. <laughs> no, stop, don't. Is that, is that it still? Yes. What are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. What are you doing with them there, bud? I'm taking wheels off. Holy shit. Do you need my purse to hit that with? Or? Yes, please. Get Holy your purse. crap, I can see your flat spots in the tire from here. <laughs> Don't try to make it look better to yourself. I can see that. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, you just turn around. Out of frame. Yeah. Out of frame, out of mind. Don't look at it. Don't ooh. look directly at the tires, please. Don't look at my flat blemishes. Don't look at my flatness. Hey you, welcome back. On this episode of Pro Noob RC, we are installing some custom LED lights uh, that we picked up from actually Global Lux. These are the Lexus uh, 150 degree whatever LED light. You can pick them up on globallux.com. Um, we actually just scored these from a local sign shop. You can do the same. Uh, go into your local sign shop and tell them you're looking for the Global Lux DC 12 volt LED with the two light modules. Uh, we found the ones with the two lights are actually brighter than the ones that have the four lights in them. So just stick to the ones with the two lights and the 150 degree lens gives you a really nice widespread. So we've actually gone ahead and masked these ones off and sprayed them out matte black. So when we peel away the tape, we get the nice um, LED look in there. Yeah, so it looks really good and classy uh, instead of that weird, dirty looking white color. And we're gonna mount these into all four of the wheel wells and then we're gonna do one on the bottom of the front cross member and one on the bottom of the rear cross member. There's actually a little bit of a hole in the back. We'll get into that on the chassis. Uh, for the body, uh, we are, uh, or not we are, but we have finally uh, decided, or Jesse's decided on uh, some graphics for it so we can do it with the Godzilla, so we can have King Kong and Godzilla going out. Uh, we're gonna do the black roof, of course, and then we're gonna do the Godzilla with some writing and such up there, and uh, we'll do some decals and a little bit of treatment like that. Uh, are you gonna flat clear it after, or just leave it gloss with the black? Yeah, probably just, yeah, so Jesse's gonna leave it gloss with the black. Uh, we'll vinyl out all the door gaps and stuff like that like we've done on mine and it's gonna look fantastic But uh, yeah, so we're gonna start with the lights We'll show you guys how to do that what parts and pieces we use to install that uh, we also um, ordered some uh, switches from Amazon so we can control them off the radio and they're an actual pass-through which is nice whatever voltage you put in it's uh, I think they call it an eight bridge whatever voltage you put in comes out the other side and it's just triggered by your third channel and they're good from like 3 to 30 volts so uh, it's no problem to run them at 12 volt off a 3s lipo directly to these lights so um, yeah so let's get this cracking Okay guys, so this is that um, H-Bridge electric switch I was talking about. As you can see, there's a power in, a power out, and it is just triggered by your third channel, fourth channel, whatever you have open on your radio. So we need to run an extender back to the box and then run that out. I, I'm gonna mount that just sitting up in here, uh, nice and safe. It is not waterproof, um, so just wherever you put it, be mindful it's not too low and it's gonna be running through the water. Uh, they're like eight bucks a pop on Amazon. Uh, the part number is X002M3LXH3, and it is a RC remote control LED light drone 8 amp. Um, it's made by Alec, Alec Hawk, Alec Hawk, Alec Hawk. Yes, Alec Hawk. So check them out. And uh, yeah, very cool. I have bought the ones before that aren't powered. They just come from the power from your radio box. And what we're finding is after like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes of use, all of a sudden just boop, it shuts off and turns off the lights. You actually have to disconnect the battery and reconnect the battery or the power from the receiver, which it's easier to get your battery and do. So um, definitely go with the powered ones and eight amps. You can handle anything you're gonna throw at it for a project like this. Okay, that being said, with the lights, what you're gonna wanna do 
is mark everything out ahead of time. And then pretty much what we're gonna do is line up with where the end of this is and the lights are. Knowing that this is open, we're not gonna hit the shock, everything's clear, and we're gonna drill the holes for the wire so we can actually stick the light in, peel off the double-sided tape on the back, and then pull it up against, and then pull the wires through, and then start our circuit running through. Um, for this light here, we'll have the power enter here, come out this side, and then these wires gotta run back down to the middle light underneath, and then back up to this light, and then out from this light, back to this light, and then underneath to the middle one, and then back up to that side and terminate. And we'll leave the pigtail on the end just sticking out, cut off in case we want to add any more lights to the system. Um, don't really don't think we'll need any more with the amount of uh, firepower these things put out, but yeah. So let's get cracking on that. I'm gonna use a seven, 764 drill bit and I know from doing this on my truck that it's pretty much these lights why we chose these ones is they're a little bit shorter the Global Lux DC 12 volt LED they're a shorter module LED um, with only the two lights the four light ones these are about inch longer so they don't really fit well this actually fits if you look really nicely on the flat spot up there which is going to give you great coverage from behind the wheel so, so yeah you can even go like that another thing which is nice is these lights are actually tagged right on the box it says positive negative positive negative so what like i've done on my truck is i made sure all the positive are on the inside running through and actually marked it with my knife so when you're soldering everything from the top you don't have to keep flipping over and looking so that's pretty decent so but anyway, best way I, to do this is just pretty much put the light on it. Line up where your holes are going to come out the back side and just run them through. So um, positive, we're gonna to put to the inside so we know that all our wires on the inside of the vehicle are positive, negative would be the outside circuit. So, Okay, so now that we got that pulled through, it's a little bit tight. It's nice though, the wires help hold it in place. Um, you could double-sided tape it. Now you can bolt these lights through. They do have a pre uh, mounting hole pre-ran through the middle, but do not bolt them in the rear. You're gonna to have to use the double-sided tape, but it is 3M, really good, really, really good double-sided tape. So as long as that's clean and you stick it in, it's never gonna come off. Plus the wires are helping holding it in place. Um, yeah, so this is gonna be a whole bunch of drilling holes and running wires through. You guys know how to do that at this point. Uh, so we're gonna jump into that. Uh, make sure you solder all your connections and you use heat shrink on all your connections. Uh, Pre-plan everything out. Uh, the wire that you can use between these lights is even like we stole this from a, a charger. It doesn't have to be fancy. We've got other pieces of wire, but on the end of the day, they're both the same size. On the inside, this, this guy is a heavier jacket. So uh, you're running low voltage too. So whatever you can use for wire, you don't have to run and go buy nothing. Uh, the lights. Also, you can pick them up at a sign shop like Jesse and I have. Uh, we just found them online so we could give you guys a link if you don't have a sign shop in your town, which everybody does, but go talk to them. Like I said, we got 50 feet for free and no, we're not sharing, so don't ask. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna uh, get that all done and we're gonna mount our switch and we'll jump back with that and uh, we'll show you all lit up and we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, few hours later we've got it all done uh, we're running an auxiliary 3s pack in the extra battery tray we can also move this to the rear if we're going on a long run and we want to carry two pockets so we don't feel like losing our pants with carrying a big battery in it we can strap it in here like we like to do when we go out uh, so it's all done it's all run daisy chained all together it's a bit of a loop and a mess uh, looks fairly clean 
it's kind of tough to loom stuff up when it's running like that, but it looks fairly clean. We got one wire joining the front to the rear. Uh, we did find some heavier wire. We were just showing you guys. You can use whatever you got kicking around. It's not going to burn up. Uh, we mounted the switch right to the transmission like we said we were going to do. A nice little valley there. Uh, with the tight fenders and such, we're hoping not too much snow and mud gets up there, but I bought like six or ten of these switches. They were so cheap, so we just ran with them. Uh, we're going to use them a lot of other stuff. So, um, yeah, so let's fire this truck up. And check out some lights. Boom. Dang. So yeah, there you go. Um, oh. Pretty dang bright, I would say. Uh, it's got wicked coverage all the way through front to back. So very happy with that. Uh, yeah, the light coverage from where we lined them up, the where we lined up the lights. Where we lined up the lights, they're on the same plane, so you get exactly the same shadow of the wheel out on both sides and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Worked out pretty good. You guys want to see that straight on. Oh, yeah. So just a little bit of firepower down there. Hit the lights off again. Oh, we could use it to light the bench. Nice. So. Yeah, so that... Uh, That's about how easy that is, guys. Uh, very simple, very cheap. Uh, the entire mod, uh, because we got our lights actually for free from a sign shop, the only part that cost us was the switch was eight bucks. So this is an $8 mod plus time, if you guys can uh, find the lights, which I'm sure if you go out and plug a sign shop, they'll give them to you for free like they did for us. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna jump onto the body. We'll uh, see you guys back in a few seconds. We're gonna get the graphics laid up on that and start getting that guy done. Okay, that was fun. We got that truck all lit up, looking fantastic. Now on to the next part is gonna be the body detail. Uh, like I said earlier, we've been waiting to get this one done for a while. Uh, dead of winter up here again in Manitoba, minus 50. Uh, one of the many things in Winnipeg that will kill you. Um, so yeah, we always go with Tamiya paint, just in case you guys are wondering what the can looks like, if it's not really common in your area. Fantastic product, this is a TS6. This is the matte black that we use on everything around here that you hear us talk about. So if you're wondering, it is Tamiya TS6 matte black. So nice little cans like that. Uh, you don't want to preheat them before you spray it. What I usually do if I'm wearing jeans, I shove them in my back pocket, or I just stick it under my armpit while I'm doing something and get everything ready. And what that does is it warms up the can and it brings up the bottle pressure so it sprays a better, more consistent. Uh, some guys like to put them in water and heat them up in water, but what I have the worst luck, so I get a ring of water and I try to dry it all off, but I miss one drop of water and I'm spraying away and that drop of water goes beep on my paint job and destroys the paint job. So we don't mess with the water, we just use body heat good enough. Uh, this is also to me a paint. This is a roll of 40 millimeter. They make it in 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24, 30, and 35, and 40, I think. They might even go to like even wider, but I, this is kind of where we stop buying it at. Now that's the paint that we uh, tape, that we swear by for all our painting. Um, some people say it's a rice paper pa uh, tape. I don't know what that is, but um, it is super thin. It's almost transparent. Yeah, almost transparent. Very super thin, very nice um, tape. You can see all your lines through it. It cuts fantastically. You just need a very light drag the blade across and it cuts and it does not bleed. Uh, we've only ever had it actually bleed using uh, translucent acrylic paints for, um, what was it on Jesse there? Uh, Ben's taillights on his Cherokee. I think we did like red, orange, I warned him about it not to do it and he uh, figured he had it and he did it and of course it bled but um, he actually he gave us one too his little fiberglass brushes for oh, taking nice. it off that's what we fixed it with so but yeah uh, anyway okay so the graphics on this are gonna be Godzilla to go with King Kong theme Jesse's got the Godzilla Gojira no to go here oh no Gojira and then we have Gojira himself we're gonna run that on the side. 
and then we're gonna do the top in black yeah so we're gonna get laying that up um, and then remember guys uh, we got to go over and sand everything out with 600 grit sandpaper uh, we're not gonna make you watch us do that so we'll catch you guys back here once all the graphics are laid onto the truck and then we'll actually show you some of the sanding process and how we get into all the nooks and crannies which there's no easy way around it it takes a long time to get it done properly you have to make sure there's no shine left before you spray the matte black on or the matte black will flake off because it's not designed for lexan luckily this is a heavy thick lexan it's like a point 40 point 50 might even be 60 like in the corners so it's not going to flex and twist the same it's still got some flex and that's what makes your paint pop off is the plastic stretching and rolling so as long as you have it sanded it won't do that so Enough about me slapping my jaws. Let's get this rolling. Oh! We also have these 3D prints from Night Customs that we need to finish prepping and painting. It's actually a Rotopack element like we just showed you in our SCX24 in the window. And this guy actually cuts and fits right into the window. Uh, he's still sitting on his uh, supports, but he uh, mounts right into the window and it doesn't actually fill the whole plate of the window so we need to cut that out and then remove the decal and then paint that all black around up to there too so um yeah so let's give it a crack and lots of work to do tonight thing all masked off we got our art on the side we got our gojira on the front i've already cut out this window here to put in one of the night customs uh 3d printed roto packs that we fired off uh so that's gonna pop right into the window here something like that fits in looks good uh we're gonna get that paint and detailed so pretty much at this point now uh we've gone over we sanded everything out with the doo -doo -doo, where did my sandpaper go right there uh, this is 800 grit. Nope, sorry, 600 and 800 grit. Um, no, it's 600 grit. Don't listen to me. One thing you're gonna want to make sure you do is fold this guy, make him like a little, kind of push him up so he's like a little, kind of like a round area, and then you can get that little round guy to ride right in this little seam all the way down so now anywhere that it's still shiny has to be made uh, dull by sanding it which will let you know that it's being scuffed up enough that the paint will uh, grab and bite in there so uh, you want to make sure you do due diligence now and then you don't want to get some alcohol and a clean cloth and uh, just wipe it down um, I'm gonna use isopropyl alcohol I got a bottle sitting right there from the 3d printing you want to make sure you wipe all this crap off Get it set up in your paint booth and uh, rock and roll. If you're gonna be painting outside with a body this big, I'd recommend doing it with just a little bit of wind so you can keep the overspray flowing away from the body. Um, you'll end up with kind of a rough looking body if you let the overspray fall on it. So, and just make sure that all your um, sanding is done in swirls, not straight lines because they'll actually, you'll see that in the finished paint job. So. Um, I just want to make sure everything is nice and smooth, smooth, smooth. Just a nice haze everywhere. You want to do all the way around this window, all that, and make sure everything else is fully masked off like we have it. And when you're doing the front, you guys, make sure you mask the front and the back side of the headlights so when you sand all around there and you paint, you don't paint over your headlights. Um, ask me how I know. Okay, I'm gonna go spray this. Uh, we'll come back when it's time to peel this off and then we're gonna paint up those um, Night Customs uh, inserts for the windows and we'll get this guy back up on the body. Okay, so now that we have that all blasted up in black, you wanna make sure you peel off all your masking before this is fully 100% cured, but still kind of dry. 
because you're you know going to be bumping it and touching stuff. So uh, yeah, because if you don't, it gets flaky and it sticks to the Lexan and almost becomes permanent for some reason. I don't know the science behind that electrostatic connection or something, but well. Uh, so it's gonna take some time, you're gonna need a pick and you're gonna have to take off all the little pieces of uh, the wrap that we have on the side. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get that done and we'll see you guys back here in a few seconds with this body unwrapped in all its beauty. I just wanted to show you guys, you gotta unwrap it before it fully dries. Okay guys, so that brings us to the end of the upgrades on Jesse's truck. We got it up to the pro new level like we wanted to do. Uh, we've been busy with a lot of other projects. We finally just took the time to get this one done. Um, Jesse took some time to find the artwork of the Godzilla on the side. Um, Godzilla is not a really choice graphic to try to find something that's gonna work and look somewhat decent. So he found something he was happy with uh, after months of deliberation back and forth with himself and me and other people suggesting comments Jesse came up with this and it looks fantastic um, we also got Godzilla up on the front we replaced the Rubicon on the hood with Godzilla then we went ahead removed all the plastic on the body we resprayed that in matte black then we cut and modified Jesse's mirrors all you need to do for this is drill a hole through the bottom put a screw through it we'll drill the hole cut it off and then run a screw through the bottom and then you can have a nice folded mirror um, they are selling them on Amazon and other places. Just mod your own mirror, it's simple enough. Uh, we got the roof down in the matte black. Looks fantastic. We always like the look of the matte black roof on the trucks versus the color match. It's kind of cheesy, kind of hipster and yuppie. We're not down with that. We like a classic two-tone Jeep. Uh, that brings us back over here. We went with the Night Customs um, 3D printed um, Rotopax uh, window element or window storage. We have one on both sides. Uh, they still need a little bit of paint on they're just sitting in there right now they're not even glued in we just wanted to show you how they look on there um the detail on those is printed on our 3d resin printer any cubic photon mono or something like that uh they look crazy good um they're actually designed for the axial 10.3 it comes in the overland package from night customs of my mini factory we just blew up the part 161.5 percent which will then fit the scx6 platform um, anything else back here? Yeah, pretty much we have the tail lights left to do. And then we have the hinges, uh, hood hinges and uh, tailgate hinges from Night Customs in the 3D prints, just like mine. We need to get those put on, but you guys uh, will see that in some pictures on Instagram, or we'll do a quick short, um, just some shorts to see with them on there. Um, we just, we want to get outside and go for a run. It's finally actually only like minus three degrees today so it's a good time to get out it's already dark outside but with the light kit we put in this it's a great time to take advantage of taking them outside and putting some led firepower out there so <laughs> okay so let's take these outside and see how those lights do guys we'll see you outside let's go